Hi, church family! Um, my name is Hallie Weinberger, and I'm a senior at Farmington High School, and I'm going to be sharing my testimony with you today. So, I began my personal relationship with the Lord in my sophomore year of high school, and I continued to pursue Him throughout high school, seeking His will for my life. Going into senior year, I felt like I had gotten the hang of putting my trust in God. I knew He had a plan for my life, and I was going to listen to whatever God was telling me. Then, senior year came. And when you're a senior, everyone asks you the same thing. Where are you going to college? Do you know what you're doing next year? And every time someone asked, I always thought, I wish I knew the answer to this question, but I just don't. And I, I just didn't. I had no idea what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. I knew I wanted to go to a four-year college, so I started there. Early on, Bethel was on my radar. It was a Christian college, I knew a lot of strong Christians that attended there, and I thought it could be the next step in my faith journey. I would get to be surrounded by like-minded people, attend chapel a few times a week. What better place than Bethel to grow in my relationship with Jesus? I loved the school, but I was going to keep my options open. I was pretty sure that Bethel was where I was supposed to be, but again, I was going to listen to God. I was going to go where he was leading me. So, I toured other schools, Eau Claire, Gustavus, UMD, St. Ben's, all sorts of other colleges, liking them and applying for them along with Bethel. I received financial aid packets back from schools, and Bethel was still more expensive than I wanted it to be. But I wasn't going to let the price take stop me, though. If God really wanted me somewhere, I would go. I believed he would make a way for it to happen. And so during the applying process, I had been praying that God would just lead me where I was supposed to go. And so far, I wasn't really hearing much of anything from him. I kept praying that his will would be done, but again, he didn't really give me any response. So I kept pursuing Bethel because it seemed like it was the right thing to do. And I really liked it. It was comfortable. I fit in. I knew if I went there, I would love it. So I spent a lot of time at Bethel over the course of senior year. I attended their Christmas concert, stayed overnight, auditioned for choir scholarships, applied for departmental scholarships, poured hours of time into writing essays for them, and I talked with literally every admissions counselor at the school. I got connected, and I took advantage of every opportunity there was to find more aid. I kept in touch with other schools too, doing most of the same things, but at a more laid-back level. I found out that I didn't receive a music scholarship or the departmental scholarship from Bethel, and the admissions counselors couldn't really do much to help my financial situation. But I was still praying that God would reveal to me where he wanted me, which, you know, pretty sure. Bethel. But still, nothing from God. No answer. No clues as to where I was supposed to go or what I was supposed to do. He had yet to send me a flying dove with a note that had the name of the school I was supposed to attend on it. Frankly, I was disappointed. But one day, I came home from school, and I just randomly searched up Minnesota State University Mankato. I don't really know why. It just kept coming up in conversation, and something someone had said at school earlier that day just kind of hit me and reminded me of it. So I was scrolling through the website when I saw the application. It was super short, so I decided to apply. I figured at this point I had no idea what I was doing, so it didn't hurt to pick a brand new college that I knew nothing about. I scheduled a tour for three days later, drove down, walked around for an hour and a half, and I drove home. I liked it, but it wasn't Bethel. I was still hanging on to Bethel, and I gave it one last attempt by appealing for more financial aid. God was still silent, and I was still waiting. The appeal came back, and I didn't receive the aid I needed. Then the Lord spoke. He told me, Hallie, you've been knocking at a closed door. I have bolted it shut, covered it in chains, locked it from the inside out, and you are still trying to pull it open. There's an open door just to the right that you are not looking at. I've already opened this door for you, and still you insist on trying to get inside the one that's locked. I have told you what to do. You just aren't listening. There's a reason every attempt you make to get closer to Bethel results in a closed door. And I just kind of sat there for a minute. And I was like, wow. Okay, Lord, I hear you. You want me to go to Mankato and be uncomfortable and grow and learn to seek you every day in a place where it's not built into my schedule. You want to challenge me and, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll go. But for me to be able to say, I'll do it, Lord. I'll go to Mankato. God had me endure a season of waiting and trusting. I was waiting for a long time for God to speak and direct me in my next steps. Waiting for God to reveal himself to me, 
waiting to hear back from schools, waiting for myself to make a decision. But while I was waiting, I had to trust that everything would end up as it should. I had to trust that God knew where he wanted me, and he had a purpose for my life at whatever college I went to. I had to trust that God was doing something in the season of waiting, and that the waiting wasn't just wasting time. I'm still in the season of trusting and waiting right now, and due to our, cer- or our current circumstances, so are most people. We're all waiting for stores to open, waiting to go within six feet of another person, waiting for a vaccine for the end of the pandemic. And while we're waiting, we're trusting that God has a purpose and that he is working within the pandemic. We're trusting that he is working everything for his good. We're trusting that he will provide in the midst of people losing jobs. We're trusting that he will heal people. We're trusting that he is in control and knows the number of our days. And as hard as it is to trust and wait with seemingly no response from the Lord, I believe that God is preparing us in the waiting and the trusting. He is preparing each of us for something in our own lives, preparing us and getting us ready to answer his call and to be able to say, I'll do it, I'll go. So I guess my testimony is evidence that God is still working in each of us and that trusting isn't a one-time thing. It's a continuous struggle we face and we have to resist the urge to grab control of the reins because what God has planned for us is better than anything we have planned for ourselves. When we try to seize control of our lives, We blind ourselves to God's desires for our life. I got to experience that. God wants to work in us. He wants to work in you, and he is working in you. But sometimes you just have to stop and sit and listen. 